Welcome to some more fans. My name is Kipaz and Energy, and with me is my love of my life. Say hi, Miss Energy, Mrs. Energy. Hi. She's here in the background. So yeah. So today's review is gonna be an oldie, and that is the Transformers Beast Wars Deluxe Class Cheetor. And here he is. Well, more specifically, this is the Walmart reissue. So this is the newer, this is the more, as of the recording of this video, the latest re-release of this figure. So yeah, it's very nice, very solid, and from what I can tell, it's identical to the original one. I think the plastic feels a little bit newer, does feel a little different, because I've held some, I have, I have some older Beast Wars figures, and they do feel a little different. So this one does feel newer, but the mold itself seems identical, if not the same as the original one. So yeah, here he is in his Beast Mode, which is obviously, as the name implies, he's a Jaguar, right honey? Yeah, I say that because she first saw this, and and I, and I can't blame her because this is very bulky. She thought it was a jaguar. It looks like a jaguar. Yeah, because he's really bulky, right? <laughs> I love you. But yeah, this is supposed to be an original Cheetor. Um, I did a review on the newer one from the Kingdom line, the deluxe class from the King, the from Transformer Cybertron, Fall of Cyber, the, the what, was, what was the name of it? King, the yeah, Kingdom, the Kingdom, be, the the uh, Kingdom Deluxe Class Cheetor, which was a lot leaner. That one was, I feel, was a little bit better than this one. But this is still a nice, solid figure. He's just a bit too bulky for, for a cheetah, right, my love? Uh -huh. But yeah, this is a cheetah. That's who it is, and this is Cheetor. Even though in the show they always pronounce it Cheater, but I always had a problem with that because there's an O in it, so I've always pronounced it Cheetor. How do you feel about that? Cheetor. Cheetor sounds a little better, right, than Cheater. Yeah. But in the show, they always call her, they always, he always, they always refer to him as Cheater, but I always found that off. So I always pronounce this as Cheetor. All right, so yeah, here he is. It's Beast Mode. Um, sadly, due to, like, a lot of figures from this era, he doesn't really have a lot of posability. I mean, he has a hinge in his hind legs, and that's the extent of his articulation. So he has ball joint. Ah, that's not supposed to come off yet. There we go. So ball joint and a hinge. And that's pretty much it. This doesn't move because of that, that part of transformation. So that doesn't really move. So yeah, sadly, this figure doesn't really have any articulation besides his hind legs a little bit. So yeah, that's pretty much it for his beast mode. It looks good, just really bulky. So let's get on with transformation. So first things first, we have to yank off his tail tradition at this point with the which uh, with cheetor so you have his tail put it off to the side but then something unique to this figure as far as i can tell we have to pull out his guts that's this thing and i mentioned guts because if you look carefully at the molding they molded intestines and guts on this side of his blaster because this, this is a this is a weapon can you see it my love cool yeah they molded it in, and I think in some later re-releases, they actually painted it pink, which is kind of interesting. I know in the Masterpiece, they did have his gut blaster, and they painted it pink, like in the show. So yeah, now with his accessories gone, all we gotta do is transform him, which is pretty straightforward. Just legs straightened out, pull out his feet, rotate, rotate, wait, was it rotate that way? Yes, yes it is. Then rotate the waist. Then you flip down his crotch guard. Fold out these cheetah legs. And then fold and bring out his arms. Click them into place. Fold out, fold out. And then the cheetah head, bring it down. And rotate. And then just fold it back in like so. And here we have Cheetor in his... Robot mode. And what do you think, my love? Um, it's pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. Now, is he screen accurate? Eh, a little bit. He's a little bulkier than he should be, but again, they couldn't really do... Eh, I'm just assuming that's how it was from that era. He still looks really cool. It's a nice, like, alternate version where he's, like, really extra bulky. Also, the cheetah is just sticking out. And I don't know how to feel about that. You? Mm. 
It would have been nice if like if like in later later versions they kind of like um were able to fold it in, but this did come out. Oh man, when did, when did this figure first come out? 1992, I think. So literally right before this thing happened, it was what it was it was G2 Transformers and then G1. So this is pretty this is still pretty good for something that old, something that's about as old as I am. Oh, and another thing, because this is an early Beast Wars figure, he technically has two different heads. For those of you who know, he does have his mutant head, because that was a feature they tried to do with the with the early, and I mean early, Transformer figures, where they had two different styles of heads. You had the more robotic one, which is this one, which is the one we all know at, that's related to um, Cheetor. But then we have this mutant head that's right here, which... For some reason, on this version, it kind of looks like a bug. Hold on. What do you think this looks like? Um, kind of looks like a beetle head. Yes. Yeah, it looks like a beetle head with, like, some cat ears. I think it looks fine, and that's how I display them, because, well, I do have the other, che uh, the other, the other Cheetors. So I kind of like having this play with the mutant head just for some variety. So, yeah. Well, that's enough of that, so let's get on with articulation. So head, believe it or not, does swivel. So you can rotate the head a little bit, and it can kind of go up and down because of the mutant mask. So arms are on ball joints, swivel there, and a very nice bend at the elbow. There is a there is a waist, which is nice. Ball joint, so forward back, and a bend at the knee, and I guess some toe action if you really if you really use your if you really stretch that. So yeah, he actually has pretty good articulation. It's very impressive. He's a very solid figure. Obviously he has his downsides, but I think that just comes with the territory of, you know, his age. But he's still a pretty solid figure. What do you think, my love? He's a pretty solid figure. Yeah, 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 yeah. she agrees with me. So now we come to his accessories. So we have his uh, tail here, which you just fold up and back like so. And we have a little blaster, which you can just plug in his hand i said plug in his hand and he can hold it and then you have this second blaster which he can plug in like so but something about this that's interesting for those of you who know this is actually a squirt gun how do you feel about that jane um it's a real squirt gun yeah no it's this is a legitimate squirt gun like i can squirt if i wanted to yeah, yeah. you literally it, it's a plastic pocket which i'm showing on camera this thing squeezes so you can squeeze it you squeeze this, uh -huh. you see it? You put it in water, uh -huh. you pull, you, you, um, you, um, what is it? Oh man, what's the word I'm looking for? Drain? No, you, you sort of, uh, suck up some water and then you just start squeezing it to squirt out water. This is a legitimate squirt gun. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. A lot of, again, with, uh, this first wave, a lot of figures did that cool. back during the original Beast Wars day. Um, some, another one that did it that's famous is Dino Megatron, mm -hmm. where it was his tongue. His tongue also was a squirt gun so that when you would attach it back into his head and you pull his head back, when he opened his mouth, he would shoot out water. Cool. For this one, it would just squeeze this and it shoots out water. Um, oh, who was another one? The other one I know for sure was Quick Strike, who was, and... I don't think I ever showed him to you. Does, I, I don't know if you know the name, but uh, but um, a uh, quick strike is a fusor. Have I ever explained what those are to you? No. Nope. No. So for those of you who don't know, fusors was when in Beast Wars they decided to start the so, uh, certain characters started popping up that were fusions of certain animals. So, so sorry about this little tangent, but I just want to mention mention it. But yeah, a uh, quick strike was a fusion of a scorpion and a and a cobra and a cobra snake. So, no, but here's the cool part. The actual snake head, which was instead of basically, imagine a scorpion, but its stinger is a cobra head. Uh -huh. uh, and it was a spitting cobra head. Cool. So the idea was that he, and I think on the show he did this, he would spit out venom from his, that from that snake head. Uh -huh. So how they did it is that in the toy, that snake head was could, could store water. Right. So it was a functioning sword gun. And it was a small figure too. It was smaller than uh, the Cheetor. And it still had it. So they did a bunch of stuff like that. Um, and and the other one that I know had a squirt gun. 
Oh, what was his name? He was the Dragonfly. Jetstorm. I believe his name was Jetstorm. And he was the Dragonfly. And I think his tail was also a squirt gun. And I think that's it. I think after those guys, they kind of stopped with the squirt gun gimmick. And started doing other gimmicks. But yeah. So Cheetor is one of the original ones who had a gut blaster with a, who was a squirt gun. So that tangent aside, and I guess, would you call that a history lesson? Yeah. yeah let's go with that little mini history lesson. So let's go, go on with a size comparison. So we have uh, Ratchet and good old Cliff Jumper. There we go. So yeah, pretty good size. And yeah, overall, nice solid figure. Um, I originally wasn't going to get him, but this re-release turns ended up being at a really, really good price. So I decided to pick him up and it's pretty cool. I think he still holds up quite well. Uh, I guess the only downside is that the cheetah head is just sticking out there. Because even the leg backpacks are not too bad because they're like really, they're, they're like kind of um, flat. So they're not really in the way. But yeah, overall, very nice, solid figure. Still holds up. Very cool. And a very decent uh, re-release. Much better than I than I expected. So yeah. Any final thoughts, my love? I like it. I like the colors. Yay, me too. Cheetor, Cheetor was a very cool guy. Cheetor was the Bumblebee after Bumblebee, but before Bumblebee, if that makes any sense. Did you follow? Sure. The, did that make any sense, my love? Of course. Okay, side tangent, and, and these explanations are kind of needed, especially for her, because she's not familiar with any of this. So, so let me break it down. Bumblebee was in the original 80s cartoon, right. but after that, we never saw Bumblebee again. Believe it or not, as popular as Bumblebee is, uh -huh. he didn't pop up until 2007 with the movie. Oh, wow. From then to then, in the middle, they basically had... A stand-in for that character type. Because Bumblebee is referred to as the kid appeal character. It's the character that a kid could associate with. Mm -hmm. And they're the one. It's basically, think Robin. Right. You know how you have Batman and then you have Robin. They made Robin so that kids could have a hero they could attach themselves to. Right. You get me? Because she really likes Batman. So she can get this, uh, this, little re uh, this sort of a reference I'm making. So that was Bumblebee. So after that with Beast Wars, they created Cheetor to be the Bumblebee replacement. And then they kept doing that in Armada. It was Hot Shot. And it was Hot Shot for a while. And then they kind of, um, who was it for Robots in Disguise? Was Hot Shot in there too? Hot Shot was everywhere. Uh, but yeah, it was basically until Bumblebee came back for the movie. Is when they finally brought him back. And then he ended up becoming one of the most popular Transformers ever. He's everywhere. Now Bumblebee is everywhere. Bumblebee rivals Optimus Prime in how many figures he has. It's ridiculous. Right? Well, she doesn't know that, but I've seen the list. Like, wow, there's a lot of Bumblebees now. <laughs> Old, new, everywhere. So that entire tangent aside, because <laughs> I think I've been talking too long. Right, my love? I love you. I love you too. Yeah, she's, she's, giving, me the, she's giving me a weird look. She wants me to stop talking now. I don't think she's realized how much uh, how much into this I really am. <laughs> Do you, my love? Yeah, a lot of the robots you know, aren't doing anything. Ah, uh, don't don't go into more detail with that. We keep this we keep this show all, you know family friendly. Yeah. But I get what she means. Don't worry that the, they don't do that here. It's one of the reasons one one aspect I like about it. They don't go there. For those of you who know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. They don't go there. Although, now nah, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. There is Silverbolt and Black Arachnia. For those of you who know, you know what I'm talking about. But it's all family friendly. So yeah, this is this is Composite Energo and Energane, and this has been our review of the Transformers uh, Beast Wars Deluxe Class Cheetor. And this is Composite Energo and Jane signing off. Peace out. Peace out and be safe.